hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to talk you about how you can design 3d printable designs inside autodesk fusion 360 so uh, the design that we are going to talk about is a thread so how we can optimize threads uh, in our design inside fusion 360 so it will be easily 3d printable and also will be our cable prototype so uh, right now on your screen here you can see that uh, uh, this is the thread that we had designed inside Fusion 360 and we had optimized it for 3D printing since we are going to use our desktop 3D printer that is Tabletan Tula and we had also used the material PLA so it is a very easy material to 3D print on your desktop 3D printer so we had used that material and uh, you can see the output that the, the product is pretty uh, uh, practical right it's working the threads are working it's uh, it's it, it was very uh, easy to print this part since I had optimized the part inside Fusion 360. Or oh, you also have to uh, take care of your 3D printer tolerance, material tolerance, and all these things. So by uh, by considering all those points, I had designed this part. So if you want to learn how to optimize your threads inside Fusion 360, so please keep watching this video and and don't forget to like this video if you find the content informative because uh, that is the only way the youtube will understand that uh, uh, this video is having so much of useful information and if you are coming first on this channel then don't forget to subscribe also so let's move on to fusion 360 and we'll see that uh, how we can optimize the parts so here we are inside autodesk fusion 360 so right now on my desktop here you can see this is autodesk fusion 360 so this is the by default there is a drawing launch design is launched here and uh, whenever i start any design in fusion 360 the first two things i always take care of is the the drawing units we make sure that the drawing units are correct so here you can see right now it is in millimeter and the second thing is that the design history is turned on so the bottom panel here it shows that the design history is turned on so now we are ready to move on to our designing portion so uh, uh, we'll go on to the data panel here we'll, we can be able to assess our data panel from here so we'll click on here to see our data panel so here you can see these are all our projects that we are working on so we'll uh, select this youtube uh, project here and we'll double click on here to open that project so here you can see uh, there are few projects few 3d models are already here that uh, i had already made a tutorial video about this model so you can find those on my channel you can check out that so the for, for today's we are going to save this file with a name uh, we'll give it a name of uh, we'll write it a 3d printable thread 3d printable thread but it's with some kind of design so i will just write it as a 3d printable thread and we'll click on the save here so here you can see the moment i had saved this file and here you can say see that it is getting saved here so i can now close this data panel since the work is over for here now so I'll close from here and now we are ready to get started our design so the first thing we have to create a sketch so I will just click on here to create a sketch so here you can see and now I will select my plane on which I want to create my sketch so I will select this front plane to create my sketch here you can see the sketch tools are active now and we are just perpendicular to our plane so the next thing that we will start creating sketches here so first we are going to create a circle of uh, uh, of diameter I will just uh, keep the diameter at 7 millimeter here so you can see I will write 7 and we press enter so you can see I had created a circle of 7, seven millimeter diameter again I will create another circle by using the same center I will create a circle of 18 millimeters diameter so I will just write 18 and will press enter so you can see uh, the both uh, the two circles I had created next thing I have to create a hexagon around this circle so I will go on to here on the create panel I will expand this panel and from here I can select uh, a polygon uh, so I will just activate the polygon tool uh, here I want the circumscribed polygon dot that will touch the circle from outside so I will activate that I will first I will select the center of the polygon then I will drag outside like this and will I will try to touch the circle like that here you can see uh, so now it is a, a hexagon here since uh, I had created a polygon with six sides so here you can see the next thing that uh, I want this this point and this point to be uh, vertical so I, I had selected th both the points by pressing shift on my keyboard and I'll activate this I will apply this constraint vertical constraint so here you can see and now my sketch is completely constrained and my sketch is also ready so you can see i had a few problem here that it is not touching the circle right 
so what I have to do is I have to apply one more constraint here so I will apply the tangent constraint between this circle and this hexagon here you can see right now it is stretching so now my sketch is fully defined if, you, if I expand it from here this this icon here it shows that my uh, this lock small lock icon here at the corner it shows that the sketch is fully defined so now i can click on finish the sketch to finish up, up my sketch the next thing that we have to extrude date this uh, this sketch by a particular amount so we'll, we'll be able to give it a thickness a uh, particular thickness so the thickness that we are going to give it is uh, 2.4 millimeters so i will just use my extrude tool from here and we'll select the profiles that i want to extrude i will select all of the profiles like this and then I will press 2.4 millimeter on my keyboard and here you can see it is uh, getting extruded like this here you can see so uh, this is the uh, uh, base base of our uh, design that we had created the next thing that we will move on to our next sketch so the next thing that we have to create a cylindrical portion over this base uh, where, we'll, uh, where we are going to apply our threads for that what we are going to do is we will activate our sketch tool from here again and we'll select this plane the top of the body as our sketch plane and we'll select the plane here you can see the plane has been activated for sketching so i will just orbit it a little bit to see it in a better view so here you can see and uh, the next thing that we are going to do is we'll again we'll create a circle on this uh, face so i will just select the origin same origin and i will create a circle like this so i will define the diameter of this circle as 14 millimeter for now here you can see the 14 millimeter of circle i had created and now i'm going to extrude this uh, portion by a particular amount so i will just click on the finish sketch from here and i will use the extrude tool i will select the profile and i will extrude it by by 20 millimeters uh, like so so i had extruded this by 20 millimeter here you can see and the operation i will keep it is a join because i want uh, this extruded portion and the base to be as a single body so for that i had kept this operation as join so i will just press ok here so here you can see the base has been created right and the diameter is the outer diameter i can just select the corner and i will able to see here the information that the outer diameter is of 14 millimeter and the radius it's half of that that is seven millimeter so this is how we had created the base for this so the next thing is that uh, we have to create a nut uh, around this around this thread that we're going to apply it on the surface so uh, before applying threads on here the, uh, what what we had planned is that we'll uh, create nut uh, uh, nut that will go around this thread so to uh, draw our nut what we are going to do is we'll again click on our create a sketch tool from here again we'll select this face as a sketch plane here you can see the face has been activated we'll orbit it a little bit to see it in a better view here you can see and now i will create a hexagon here first so i will just go on to create panel here i will go into polygon i will click on this circumscribed polygon you can also create inscribed polygon it's completely on your choice so for now i will create circumscribed polygon i will select the origin and then i will drag outside like this so i can uh, i am randomly creating a hexagon like that uh, and once i had created the hexagon i will apply the constraint to to match it with the base so i will just select the these two points by pressing control uh, shift on my keyboard then i will apply the vertical constraint here you can see like this and i will make sure that these two are matching also so for that what i will do is uh, uh, what i can do i can apply this constraint 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 i can select this point and this point so the things will match here you can see so both are of same size both hexagon are of same size so the next thing is that we will also create one more circle here uh, so instead of creating a circle what we can go go on to the the perpendicular to that plane and i will use my offset tool from here i will select the profile that i want to offset so uh, uh, this is the kind of tolerance that i am providing here uh, so the nut will fit over over to our uh, base thread so for this i am going to use a tolerance of 0.4 millimeter you can uh, you can try out different tolerance also because it's completely based on your 3d printer so how uh, precise your 3d printer will able to print so for my 3d printer it, the tolerance i usually take is about 0.4 millimeter so this is what i had taken now i will click on this finish sketch since our sketch is completed here you can see all the three sketches that we had created till now all are constrained completely defined and now i will move on to extrude here i will activate the tool and i will extrude it by a uh, minus 4.8 millimeter here so here you can see the second body uh if you if i expand the body panel the first body is the base body and the second body is the the other body that we had created so uh 
uh, this flow can also be different in some cases if you try out the component features in your uh, Fusion 360 so that you can afford to watch out my component features how we can uh, explore this component fe features you can watch my other videos uh, you can check out the link below in the video I will give that uh, video link where I had explained everything about the components how we can start with components and create the bodies but that is uh, only needed when you are doing uh, larger assemblies where lots of parts but in just one two or three parts you don't need to go through that process you can just simply start modeling the things since uh, at, at the final stage we want this to be 3d printable so you can see the mod the base model has been created so the, our the next task is to apply the threads right we have to apply the correct thread sizes on this part so uh, we are going to activate our thread tool from here so we'll go on to our create tool here here you can see we had a tool called thread i will just activate the tool and the first thread that thread red that we are going to apply it is on the this base body so here you can see it is asking me to select the face so I will select the face from here and it is automatically giving me a preview of my thread but it is not actual thread it is just a visual representation uh, it's a kind of image that has been projected on the surface of this uh, cylindrical face so if you want the original thread then you have to pick uh, activate this feature from here by clicking by clicking here as modeled so here you can see as the moment I had uh, clicked here the 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 tool has been activated the thread has been applied here the practical thread the original thread has been applied and right now we had uh, uh, we had all the settings here the threads is uh, the, the standard i am taking as a iso isometric profile and the size is definitely the 14 millimeter was the diameter so that is the diameter and then we can try out different uh, uh, different designation from here also but uh, for now i will just keep the designation the highest possible because i want it to be 3d printable and the class is also 6z and the direction is right hand or left hand you can choose as per your convenience so in most of the cases we are going to use the right hand threads so i will keep that and i will press ok so here you can see the thread has been applied on the base body right so uh, to get a better view what we can do is uh, we can we can just expand the panel from here we'll select the front plane and we'll apply a section view from here to see the section view of the thread so here you can see this is how it is looking right now and if i press ok here you can see so this is how thread is the so the next task is to apply uh, the the thread on the the inner profile of our nut so for that i will just turn off the analysis for now and I will turn off the first body, base body also for now. And so here is my nut isolated. So now I will apply thread on here also. So it's the same thing we'll do. We'll activate the tool. We'll select the face, and it will automatically give me a preview. I will apply the modeled here, and you can see the thread has been applied. And based on the the internal diameter, uh, it has already selected the the best profile. And I always make sure that the designation we are uh, selecting that must be higher because uh, we want our features to be as large as possible because we want to 3d print these things so i will just select uh, this one and we'll press ok so here you can see and if i turn on my bodies again and i will activate my analysis from here so here you can see this is how it is looking right now so here you can see it is not matching uh, and the reason it is not matching because uh, the the, the diameters we had selected for both the threads are different if i check for the, my first thread it is uh, size is 40 millimeters and if for my second thread it is 15 millimeter so i will change back to this to 14 millimeters so it will match so here you can see i have changed it back to 14 millimeters and i will just press okay so here you can see now it is it, it is matching but uh, it's it's overlapping here because maybe i have to move my nut a little bit so i will just go on to my top view i will i will select my nut mod to I'll activate the move tool from here and i will move it a little bit of amount maybe of one millimeter and will press ok so here you can see it it is it is matching but still there are uh, a very le less tolerance uh, for this for this thread to fit on to our base uh, a base thread so what i will do i will modify this threads a little bit so for that what i will do i will turn off the nut nut body for now and i will keep turned on my this base body and i will apply few fillets few uh, i will move on to the faces little bit to to the inside and 
Uh, for that, what uh, what we are going to we are going to start with this one press pull tool. So we'll activate the press pull tool. We'll select the faces that we uh, we want to move a little bit inside. So I will apply here as minus minus point four millimeter like this. I think the minus point four is not working. Minus point one millimeter. Yeah, it's working and the same i will do on the other face i will select the face i will activate the press tool and will write minus 0.1 here you can see like this uh, now if i uh, if i turn on the analysis from here uh, so you can see and if i will turn on both my bodies so you can see now we have the better tolerance here you can see since i had press pulled uh, the faces little bit towards inside uh, because of that uh, there are more tolerances now uh, so the will again will turn off our uh, nut body will turn off our analysis uh, feature and we'll apply fillets on this sharp corners because this these are very thin features and our 3d printers will not be able to 3d print these features so for that we'll apply the fillet tool on all the corners first i will apply on all the bases i will apply a fillet of around 0.2 millimeter or maybe 0.4 millimeter okay and i will apply fillet on the top face also on this top faces of 0.2 millimeter yeah here you can see the preview uh, now the things are looking good so here you can see the preview that we had applied the fillets on uh, on on all the features that were very sharp and not 3d printable so the things are looking very smooth now and i think it is uh, optimizable for 3d printing and the next thing we are also going to apply few uh, chamfer here on this corner here so it will become easy for uh, for to assemble the nut with this feature so if, if it's if it is not working no problem what we can do uh, we can we can just uh, we can also apply the fillet here instead of chamfer so i will activate the fillet and we'll select the face and we'll apply a fillet of one millimeter if it's not working we'll try out the different fillets uh, whatever is working for our model we'll apply that so I think 0.4 is working here. So I will just keep 0.4 and we press OK. So the only thing that I want is that I want the the, the first the, the the first round of the thread to be smooth. So the nuts nut will is is will easily uh, will able to assemble with the base part. So this was my target. So we'll uh, turn off the body one. We'll turn on the body two now. Uh, we'll do the same thing with this also. We'll apply the right fillets and everything on the sharp corners. So we'll activate the feature and will apply the fillet on both the bases by point, uh, point 0.4 millimeter I think we had taken point 0.4 for the base and for uh, for the for the sharp corners we are going to apply a fillet of point 0.2 millimeter yes and and we are done I think we are done so the only thing that we are going to apply right now is we apply a little bit of chamfer on both the the outer diameters so the things will become more smooth so i will just apply a chamfer of 0.4 uh, if it's not working we'll change the diameter yeah 0.2 is working so we'll just check it uh, take it as a 0.2 so here you can see and now if i turn off the bodies and we'll see the analysis we'll able to see that how the things are looking now so it's looking more kind of simple uh, 3d model that we can able to 3d print and we will also be able to uh, uh, assemble these parts very practically so this is how you can optimize your threads inside fusion 360 so here you can see so uh, you cannot directly apply the threaded uh, tool on your models inside fusion 360 and be able to 3d print that because it's it's not optimizable it's not 3d printable so you have to remove sharp corners you have to take care of the thin edges thin bodies thin parts so you have to optimize those things and you also have to take care of your 3d printer tolerance so maybe in uh, in first chance it will not be able to uh, print it successfully uh, but after a few iterations you will be able to get the final result and you will also able to understand your 3d printing tolerance so guys tell me how uh, if you like this video if you like the process uh, whether it was helpful for you or not uh, just tell me just comment below in the video i had also left uh, another video tutorial links below in the video so you can just go and check out and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you guys thank you so much thanks for watching